And the latest escape led to stolen vehicles, crashes, and a carjacking that left a man in the hospital with a gunshot wound. And now Governor Edwards is speaking out about the facility in Bridge City, and he is not announcing what many were hoping that the facility would be shut down. But Meg Ferris is following all of it for us. She's joining us live now from Baton Rouge with the latest on the governor's plans. Meg? That's absolutely correct, Katie, and we'll explain why it's not completely shutting down. But just an hour ago, the governor was joined by the secretary of the Office of Juvenile Justice and also Public Safety and Corrections, one of them saying our performance has not been good. Now, this is, as you said, in response to those jail breaks where a 59-year-old man was shot on Sunday. Now, here's what he laid out, a short-term plan and a long-term plan. Here are the key points. Short-term plan, there are about 50 in Bridge City right now. Of course, that fluctuates. Half, about 25 of the most violent people, will go to Angola in a separate facility from the adults. The other half staying, he says, are not the ones breaking out, not the ones committing those crimes. They will later, after that, when renovations are done at the facility in Baker, Louisiana, about 12 miles north of Baton Rouge, then they'll be moved there. As you said, the facility is not closing, but in the short term, increased security from state and local police. The fence beginning tomorrow will be um, fixed and shored up where there are problems. There are also long-term facilities being identified around the state that will either be built or renovated and funding is being secured for those. Now, he said there were multiple failures, leadership to correctly utilize additional security in the past and shortcomings in that alert system. We don't know, the media don't know, and also people in the neighborhood don't all know when there's been people, escapees, and their lives could possibly be in danger. That's something you'll have to sign up for with the Department of Corrections. Here's one thing the governor had to say. These incidents simply cannot and will not continue. An investigation has been opened and an initial review shows that there were numerous deficiencies and failures that contributed to those six juveniles being able to escape this weekend. And that includes um, a violation of the approved plan of action for the additional security that we had uh, made available uh, to the facility on June 17th, just a month ago. As a result, three individuals, staff at OJJ, have been placed on administrative leave. Now, as WWLTV.com um, has been reporting in the last hour or so, the juvenile who allegedly shot the 59-year-old uptown, had it was the second time he broke out. He broke out last month as well. I asked the governor, has he spoken to that 59-year-old victim and what the condition was? And he said he had spoken to local law enforcement in New Orleans, NOPD specifically, about his condition, but could not share it with us, asked us to check with NOPD. He's not talking to that family as of right now. We are going to continue following the story as it is constantly changing and reporting now from Baton Rouge at the state capitol, Meg Farris, Eyewitness News.